Alrighty guys, so today I'm going to show y'all how I make a prosthetic. This here is my Dale head. It is a head of one of the volunteers at the haunted house I work at, Hangman's House of Horrors. It's been through a thing or two, that's, that's for sure. It is actually a full head cast, so it's got the whole thing there. Quite heavy, I would say definitely, I don't know, like 15 pounds? Maybe more? I'll wait one day. I'll let you know. But, anyway, so, um, here is the modeling clay that I use. Um, I get it from a company called Biddy Mold Supply. I'll put a link in the description, letting y'all know where I get it. And, um, I like it because it's, usually starts out hard, but ends up being pretty pliable after you just roll it around. I usually like to mess with mine quite a bit until I get it to be nice and pliable and, and it's easier to work with like that for me. So what am I gonna, gonna be making today? The character that I'm gonna be working on is a clown so I think I'm going to do a clown nose and a clown chin. Uh, first I think we'll start off with a chin the clown chin because I think that'll be a little bit easier so usually what I do is I just break off a little part like this and then I just start going at it and essentially I'm not gonna go any higher than the lip because I want the edges to be able to blend in to the rest of the skin so I will just start on the bottom and just start laying it on where I want it to be just going both sides at a time and just taking off a little bit more and going at it. I'm going to use this little sharp guy here and I'm just going to cut a hole or a slit right in the middle. <coughs> and of course it's not going to look like this whenever you end up doing it because I'm going to smooth it out. So I didn't really like the way my chin was coming out so what I did was got this end of one of my sculpting um, tools and I just wiggled it back and forth and then kind of rolled it out like this and that and then I just squeezed the top so it wouldn't have the little edge there and then what I'm also going to do is I've got my little cup filled with some naphtha. I don't know if you see that there. Got this at at Home Depot. Um, pretty much like whenever I'm cleaning this it deteriorates what's in there. So I use it to get rid of the edges so they can be a lot thinner. Okay, so now that I have that all done there, I'm going to set that to the side, and I am going to build a, a wall. Not like Trump, <laughs> but I already have pre-built ones that I've already used in the past that have hydrocal all over them. So I just reuse them because I'm super cheap, and this stuff is kind of expensive. So, as you see, I already have them layered up here. And um, what I'll do first is get some of the good clay, and I'm going to build an edge around this. 
Um, so whenever I actually mold it, it'll have this space where you see the hydrocal in the middle. And it will um, allow it to be a lot thinner. Okay, so now that I have the um, flashing or whatever it's called built around it, I just press it against the head to make sure that it's firm. And then what I'm gonna do is scrape out the inside so it has a nice and flat surface here. So that is going to be that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with some more naphtha around these insides to make sure that there's no unwanted clay anywhere. So that's going to be that. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. And then what I'm going to do is put Vaseline around the entire thing because for me that seems to make it uh, come apart a little bit easier whenever you pull it. we're going to do is mix our hydrocal hydro plaster. Um, I bought mine at Home Depot. I also bought this big ass bucket to keep it in because I don't use it except for when I'm making a prosthetic. So I've already got set aside my water and I've got these nifty little um, measuring cups here that I also got at Walmart. Right now I've got it filled up to 12 ounces of water and I'm going to fill this measuring cup up to 24 ounces because it's two parts hydrocal, one part water. Alright, before I do that, I'm just going to go over again with my prosthetic some Vaseline and just put it over my cutout part there where my flashing is going to be and putting it on the actual hydrocal underneath on his head. And then I'm also going to put it on the actual prosthetic that I'm making because I did not put any release spray. And Lord Jesus, when these things get stuck together, it is the worst thing known to man. It is not cute, not fun, and you definitely don't want to deal with it. Now, I'm not going to worry about doing the edges of the wall here because uh, that will easily peel off the outside because you're going to just make a cone thing. Um, I'm going to fill it up to about this high. As HydroCal gets uh, processes, it takes, it gets harder as it goes. So with this, you don't really have to work very fast. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. So this method here is called the dry lake bed method. And I learned this from Biddy Mold Supply. They have amazing YouTube tutorials about um, life casting, making prosthetics. sticking up there at the top um, what I'm gonna gonna do what I am going to do what am I, I almost sounded like Busta Rhymes there what are, I can't even do it when I'm playing but anyway so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and let that set for a second um, and let it get all processing because it'll stay liquidy for quite a while I find it stays liquidy for too long for what I'm doing which is a, a much smaller piece 
uh, my little joker here and um, so yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and start playing with it when you stick your hand in it's um, pretty hard I mean it's not hard but it's like got a nice thick consistency um, once it does see right now it's pretty runny what I'll do with this runny portion is I'm gonna paint it on the actual prosthetic to make sure to get any crevices crevasses But you just stick your hands in, just mix it around. Did I warn y'all this is gonna get dirty? Any old brush because um, you don't wanna let the hydrogel sit on it. So I also have a cup of warm water so it can clean it off whenever I'm done. But let's go ahead and get started. So to show you in the light, I'm just gonna show y'all how to pretty much just paint it on there. Now, when you're doing this portion of it, this is really when it counts to um, get any kind of texture that you put inside of it or on it. If you put like an orange pill on it, it'll give it a lot of texture. I didn't quite do this one because this is not how I want my clowns to look. Alright, what I'm also going to do at this point is I'm going to take a little bit of hemp. I already put it in this little circle. This is just to make the negative a lot stronger than it is. Um, I don't want to get it on the actual prosthetic itself. So I'm going to spread this out a little bit. I just want to get it around it because that is where I don't want it to be weak. I told you this job was messy, so I hope y'all like getting in a mess. is what happens yeah all right so we're gonna go ahead and take this outside and wash it um, in about an hour or so this guy is nice and cold to touch it goes through a process where it gets hot warm moist dry cold all that good stuff so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to peel off my wall that I built okay so before I peel it off of my head I'm actually gonna scrape these down with a rasp which I got at Home Depot just to make sure this is smooth and I don't cut my just make sure this is smooth and I don't cut myself What I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the top there and just kind of pick it up and wiggle it and it should come off just like that. And that's when you've got that there, your negative mold. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean out the inside here of my cut. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some naphtha on a brush, which I've already poured in here. This thing's really hard to pour, just FYI. But I'm just going to go in and clean off all of the uh, NSP soft clay that I got on here. The reason I want to clean all this stuff off 
is because I don't want it to end up on my prosthetic. <clears throat> Whether I use gelatin or gel tin. Gelatin, you can find it in the store. It's more of a DIY kind of thing. Gel tin, you have to order online. I personally get mine from Brick in the Yard Mold Supply, which they have great sculpting tutorials, prosthetic making tutorials. Um, yeah. The next thing I'll do is I will show you how to actually make the prosthetic itself. Remember, it's just a chin, so it's nothing complicated. But now we have our negative mold, so we can make it over and over and over and over again, which is great for the haunted house. So we're gonna zero that out. It's two parts, it's two parts gelatin, two parts uh, glycerin, and one part water. I'm gonna go stick it in the microwave for increments of 15 to 20 seconds. Um, I'll let you know exactly when I come back. Okay, so I am back and it is warm. It took about 30 seconds or so. Alright, so I let that sit probably about 30 minutes. I went and ran an errand. <clears throat> but I think it's gonna be pretty much ready. Alright. And that just came right off. And now you have your first prosthetic. cut off the edges. That's our prosthetic. Next we'll just paint and apply it. And then we'll be good to go.